welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to 20 Minutes with Mike. I've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about something that impacts all of us, no matter what your career, no matter what you've got going on in your life, and that's time man management. All right, we only got 20 minutes, so let's get going. Um, the approach that I want to take today is going to be more from the 30,000 foot view than it is going to be about specific tricks or tactics. Um, because I believe that if you understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish and why you're trying to accomplish, a lot of the, the time management issues that we all deal with will go away. Um, I, I will tell you that in my experience, uh, you know, practicing law for 37 years, knowing, I don't know, thousands of lawyers, you know, the number one complaint that I always hear or comment, you know, it's not necessarily a complaint. Sometimes it's being worn as a badge of honor, but it's that I don't have enough time. I'm too busy. I got too much stuff going on. So um, we're going to look at time management for uh, from two different approaches. Um, and it and it's really approaching it from, from both angles. One is how do you get more done? How do you just get more done, you know, faster? And the second, <clears throat> which I believe is actually the easiest one, once you wrap your head around it, is how do I have less to do? So think about that for a second. You can either do, do more faster, or you can actually consider doing less. And if, if you decide to do less... Uh, that's going to take care of a lot of your time management problems. All right, but let's go. Let's go uh, into that. So, you know, the first first one, getting more done um, faster, is about efficiency. The second one of having less to do is about prior to prioritizing thing, prioritization, right? What's important? Um, you know, I, I just want to start by by saying, you know, I have read. I don't know, so many time management books. I mean, in my bookshelf here behind me is just a fraction of the books. Um, and all of them, or not all of them, uh, most of them have, you know, some kind of time management thing in them, you know, anywhere from the 5 a.m. club to getting stuff done to uh, e even um Mike Michalowicz, uh Profit First, in, in, in many ways, has time management components. Um, but, you know, and, and I, I would encourage all of you to get some books and, and just read them. I mean, um, from Dan Kennedy's The No BS Guide to Time Management for Entrepreneurs. I mean, that book is rough as far as, you know, he is like super strict timelines and, and stuff. I don't subscribe to everything that he says, but in every single one of these books, what I found is that there was a nugget or a few things uh, that I could put in my toolkit and bring out from time to time when I need them. You know, I think it's, you know, I think it's just a shame that that this is not something that they that they teach in school. You know, time management, especially now in 2022, we're all so busy. There is so much to do. You know, all of these conveniences wind up taking so much of our time. Um, this is a skill that should be taught in school. It's not, uh, and that's most unfortunate. But what I would encourage you to do is study this. Study time management, because you know what? It will always benefit you at every stage of your life. You know, and I think a, a, a lot of people don't don't study it in the way that they should. And and I don't mean like in a classroom setting, but just read and become aware and, and find different tricks and trades uh, or techniques. All right. Now, for this discussion, I think it's important that you all understand what my core uh, beliefs or uh, I guess some people would say that my assumptions are. Um, because again, we want to make sure that we're using the same vocabulary. If we're going to try to condense all this stuff down in, in some way that's going to be useful for you. Um, the first core belief is that being effective requires limiting distractions. Okay. That, that is a fundamental core belief that the more that you're able to limit your distractions, the more, um, effective you're going to be. 
So, you know, a lot of people say they believe that, but they don't because their phone's on their desk and it's dinging and ringing and every alarm's going off. But if you want to be efficient and effective, you got to limit the distractions, external and internal. Second core belief, um, there's no one size fits all. And what works for you today won't necessarily work for you tomorrow. Um, and that's why I, I keep saying, you know, by studying this area um, and putting as many tools in your toolbox as you possibly can, you have different things that you can use at different times in different situations. You're not stuck with a one size fits all. For me, that just hasn't worked. I have read great books that have had wonderful ideas that I still use today, but it can't be the one and only the exclusive. At least it doesn't work that way for me. So second core belief, there's no one size fits all. Third core belief, it's always easier if you don't have to buck your natural disposition. So um, I call it going with the path of least resistance. Um, just because it's easier doesn't mean it's worse right? Um, I'm not saying that you always go the easy route. Sometimes you have to buckle down and do the hard stuff. But it is always, in my opinion, worthy of looking at the path of least resistance first, because if you can do the easy way, do the easy way. I mean, that's a real effective way to save time. So core beliefs, being effective requires limiting distractions. There's no one size fits all. And it's always easier if you don't have to buck your nat natural disposition. Um, you know, willpower really should be the last resort. You know, so much, so many of us focus or um, rely on willpower to just gut it out. And, and I suggest that that really should be the, 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 the last resort. If you, if nothing else will work for you, then you got to use some willpower. Now, discipline and willpower are a little bit different. Discipline is making a decision and following through with it. That's discipline. Willpower is doing something that you really don't want to do, you know, and just forcing yourself to do it, you know, not necessarily at a time or place um, where it would be convenient. If you're doing it with dis discipline means you, you plan it and you put it together. So in my view, willpower should be a, uh, a, a uh, last resort. All right. Tips for efficiency. So let, let's, I'm going to start a little bit at the, um, at the beginning, get more done faster. Cause I do think that there's, there's room there um, for improvement. Um, tips for efficiency, plan your week and your day. So plan a week in advance and then each day revise it and review it and, and see, is this still um, the plan that's going to work for today? Just because you, you decided to do something on a Tuesday, if when Tuesday rolls around, it's not something that needs to be done, then, you know, you, you can revamp. So, so for example, um, my main thing for Wednesday of this week um, is to do this show. Well, it's Tuesday. I'm doing it the day before because a meeting that I was supposed to have today got canceled. So I moved everything up. So tomorrow I'm going to have to review um, my my intentions and figure out, okay, what is it that I'm, I'm going to do today now that I've taken this project um, off the table? I don't have to do it uh, tomorrow. All right. Plan your week, plan your day. Time block what's important. So mark it off in your calendar. Block it off from two o'clock to three o'clock. I am going to do the, the following things. Now, this is what we do for appointments all the time, right? We make appointments with other people from, you know, Two to six, I'm going to go to the doctors. From you know uh, one to three, I'm going to you know meet with Mr. Smith, right? We do that all the time, and we honor those. We need to do the same thing for ourselves. We need to honor our appointments for ourselves. That's what time blocking is. From one to two, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. This is what needs to get done, and I'm going to honor that. So, um, time blocking the things that are important. Consider what is the one thing that's the most important thing to do right now. So there's a book called The One Thing. It's a wonderful book. I highly encourage you to read it. But fundamentally, what it boils down to is determining each day and, and really at, at any given time, what is the one thing that you could do today that would make things easier or maybe even eliminate other things that you have to do? 
You know, so for example, uh, this is kind of a silly example, but if you get a, a, a ticket, the one thing should be get that thing taken care of, paid for. Because if you don't get that done, then you wind up with a failure to appear and then you got to go to court and then you, all other things become more difficult. If you just take care of it, whether you agree with the ticket or not, um, it makes a lot of other potentials go away. It's probably not a great example, but um, it, it's, you know, there are many things that you can do that will eliminate other things or make them easier. So consider each, you know, each day for sure. What is the one thing that you should do today? What is the one thing that needs to get done? And then put that at the top of the list. Leave space on your calendar. Always leave space on your calendar because you know that stuff is going to come up. There's going to be a phone call from a client, you know, a client who's unhappy or there's going to be a traffic jam or there's going to be something else that comes up that needs to get done. You need to meet with somebody or, um, you know, a computer goes down or, you know, the, the millions of different things that go on during the day. Leave space for those things. Leave space for people coming in your office. Hey, you only got a minute? you know, in a half hour later, you got to leave space in your calendar. Don't give yourself eight hours worth of work in an eight hour day, because you're, you're going to be sadly disappointed. You're not going to get it done. And then you're going to, you know, feel like you're, you're, you're backing up. All right. Leave space in your calendar, set up your workspace to limit your distractions. Where are you working? You know, one thing that I recommend to people is take your phone and put it in your briefcase or put it in a drawer or put it somewhere where it is not visible to you. It is not available to you. That is not the purpose of why do you need why do you need your cell phone at your desk? You got access to your computers and the regular phone. You don't need your cell phone. Okay, put it away. It's a distraction. Just its mere presence being there is a distraction. So make your workspace. Um, uh, What's the word I want to uh, conducive to to effective and efficient and 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 good work? So think about what is it that you see? What is your what does your workspace look like? Okay, it's visual. What does your workspace smell like? You know, scented candles and incense and you know, uh, there's all kinds of things that you can give it a, a real pleasant smell. I will just tell you over the years, you know. I've always used um, scented candles and I liked them in the office. You come in and you get this kind of, you know, nice smell and just, it's just very calming. And then what are you listening to? Are, are you know, are you a person who likes to have some background music? I mean, there, there's some music that is actually quite calming and helps with focus because it's so background. I mean, I wouldn't be listening to death metal while I'm trying to write emotion, you know, um, or really anything with, with, um, lyrics that you want to be listening to. I like listening to blues because it's calming to me, but set up your workspace so that it, it promotes efficient efficiency and um, uh, limits distractions. All right. Um, have a system, you know, and, and the, the, I think one of the best systems is the four D's uh, delete, delegate, Delay or do. Everything that runs across your desk, you're going to do one of these things anyway, right? You're going to either delete it, get rid of it. It's trash. Don't need it. Get it off my desk. Don't pile it up in a pile. Get rid of it. Delegate it. Give it to someone else. Have them do it for you, which is something I highly encourage. Delay or actually do it. Um, those, you know... Six things, plan your, your week and day in advance, uh, time block what's important, consider what's the one thing um, that you should be doing today, what's the one most important thing, leave space on your calendar, and set up your workspace to limit distractions and promote efficiency, and have a system like the four Ds. If you do that, um, you're going to get as much done as quickly as you can. But there's even a better way in my view, and that is prioritize, all right? You have less to do. Learn how to delegate. So many lawyers that I know just are not comfortable. You know, they got to have their fingers in. They got to approve everything. Learn to delegate. Learn to trust and verify. Learn to give people responsibilities. Give them parameters and then give them the responsibility. You know, if you hire good people, 
that's not going to be a problem. Learn to delegate. Learn to say no. Learn to say no to the clients and the work that you don't want to do or that's not profitable for you or doesn't make sense or it's just not something that that um, you want to be doing. Um, learn to say no. You can't do it all. You know, every time you get asked to to be on a committee of this or that, you got to ask yourself: Does this promote what I want or not? If it does, then um, you should consider yes. If it doesn't, then you got to say no. You just got to say no. You know, my wife and I uh, took up the the mantra of "It's not a hell yes; it's a hell no." You know, because we were running into decisions that like were good opportunities, and there were things that that you know we wanted to consider, but at the end of the day, it was either a hell yes or a hell no. All right, learn to trust and verify. Um, but to do this, you got to know what you want. See, in order to prioritize, you got to know what you really want, and you know, you got to know what the end game is. Where is it that you're trying to go? What's the destination? What, you know, what's your, what do you want your day to be like? What do you want your life to be like? Um, and you got to give that some thought. That's the, the, the key. All of these things require just some consideration. You got to think about it for a bit. Um, now, you know, goal setting, when we're talking about prioritizing, what do you want? What's your dream? You know, we're talking about goal setting, right? Um, because the, your goals will help you set your pri your priorities, your North Star. If I'm going north, I don't want to go in any direction that's not north, okay? It may not be straight on north. It may, you know, but the bottom line is I know where I'm going. And I and, and if it doesn't get me where I want to go, then, you know, I'm not going to do it. It is what it's going to boil down to. I'm going to say no. Um, You know, there there's... I, I've talked before about manifestation. You know, if you have a real clear goal and you know where it is that you're trying to go um, and you really think about it, um, it's white table. What you think about, you bring about. So, um, but there's a couple of issues that, that uh, you know, we, we, we see happen. And that is that it's not really your goal. You know, it's your parents goal or your or society's goal or your teacher's goal or your partner's goal, your wife's goal, your 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 husband's goal. Um, if it's not your goal, it's really hard to be focused. On. <clears throat> you may move it towards it because you're you're going that direction, but it's super hard to manifest it if it's not your goal. So, you know, one of the things to consider is, is it your goal? You, do you really want it? You know, um, because sometimes it's not something that you really want. Or it could just simply be that it's not clear enough, right? Your goal is vague. You know, I want to make a lot of money. Well, that's super vague. It is so much better to say, I want to you know, do a million dollars gross, or I want to do $2 million gross, or I want to, you know, make X amount of dollars in my pocket, taxable income. Um, those are those are numbers that you can really aim at. But when you say I have a lot of money well, or more money, well, what does that mean? 50 cents more, a dollar more? What does that mean? You know, the reason that this becomes really important is knowing what your goals are, knowing what as crystal clear as, as you can is because uh, of, a, of a thing called um, the, the reticular act activator. Basically, it's a thing in your brain that causes you to pay attention to things that you think are important. So if you start looking for a yellow Camaro, you know, if you think, hey, you know, I think I might want a yellow Camaro, all of a sudden you'll see them everywhere. Now, is that because there's more of them? No, it's not. It's because now you're noticing it. Your brain sees a gazillion things every day, so much input, has to limit what comes in, but now you've said yellow Camaro is important. Well, this is the same thing that's true about goals. If you know what your goal is, you're going to start to see the opportunities to get there. There's going to be more and more opportunities to get there so it's almost the end of the 20 minutes i always promise you i'll be out of here in 20 minutes but here's the bottom line um you need to look at at time management from a, a higher perspective and think of it not only as how can i get more done effectively but how can i actually how can i personally actually do less and if you can determine you know how to delegate, how to say no, how to take things off your calendar, you will find that there is plenty of time to do everything that you need to do. I mean, I, I, I as any of you who've watched this before know, 
at, at the height of my building this um, this business, I was doing expedition length adventure racing. I was a ski patroller. I was racing mountain bikes and I was writing books. So I can tell you the time is there if you limit what you have to do to the things that really require you and then delegate or, or figure out some other way to, to, to let them go. All right, everybody. I hope you all have a great week. I hope you find this helpful. Um, if you do, give it a like. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, YouTube under Michael Chastain. Uh, that's where all of these are going to be found. Um, I hope you all have a great day. And just remember, be grateful for what you have and be willing to work for what you want. All right, y'all. Take care.